Hi everyone, in this video we are going to be talking about key terms over the respiratory, digestive, urinary, and reproductive system. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, this. Okay, so in your, the first thing that we need to know is the order of that um, air passes. So an easy mnemonic to know is never pass large, tasty, big bubbles, bubbly apples, okay? So N for nasal cavity. So your nasal cavity, the role for that is to warm, to humidify, and to filter that air. We then have the pharynx. The pharynx, think of that P for that passageway for that air and that food. Then we have our larynx. So think of a la, 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 la. So larynx, that contains your vocal cords, okay? So this is the sound production. We then have the trachea. The trachea is that windpipe. It detects that air to the, um, it directs that air to the bronchi. Then we go into our bronchi, which are, which branches um, into each lung, right? And then from the bronchi, we have the bronchioles, so the smaller airways that are within our lungs, okay? And at the very end, we have our alveoli. So these are the little sacs. So they are they um, help with that gas exchange that uh, ends up happening there, okay? We then have um, one key thing to remember are the patient conditions and the outcomes. So if we have a patient that is drowning, drowning, so they're getting all of that water into their lungs, so they're not able to breathe, right? So that is respiratory because it has to do with that breathing, it has to do with the lungs. So it's respiratory acidosis, the body, the, the lungs are becoming too acidic, right? So respiratory acidosis, that will occur when the lungs cannot remove enough of that carbon dioxide, which ends up causing that excess CO2 to and um to low that blood uh, pH, right? And that ends up leading into that acidemia. Um, so um a potential question that you can have would be that you have a patient, a seven year, let's just pretend you have Emily, a seven-year-old little girl. She comes in, she was resuscitated after falling to a pool, right? So the patient is has altered. She has confusion and labored breathing. So what would this um, condition be, right? What outcome would this be? So that condition would be respiratory acidosis. Um, the same as if you have a severe panic attack. So you have a patient that comes in, they're having a panic attack. So what are they doing? What are they doing? They're breathing a lot, right? So that is respiratory since it has to do with their lungs, respiratory alkalosis or receiving too much air. So for instance, we have a patient, a 25-year-old, um, is experiencing that hyperventilation. So hyper, think of someone that's super hyper, they're going to go high. Hypo is low, remember? So hyperventilation, ventilating too much air. So hyperventilation and has tingling extremities. So they're receiving a lot of that um, that air, they have uh, tingling extremities, that would be respiratory alkalosis, right? So our nursing focus would be to encourage those slow, deep breathings um, and use all those breathing, rebreathing techniques, okay? So we want to have that balance of the CO2 levels. Severe vomiting. So anything to do with excess or um, and you could be, uh, so for this instance, vomiting or too much blood in, or any of that, is going to be metabolic. So the body is metabolic, okay? So they're vomiting, okay? Vomiting, there'll be alkalosis, okay? Because they're getting rid of it. So um, the, uh, for instance, we have a patient, a 50-year-old uh, post-surgery patient with persistent vomiting, okay? So they are presenting that weakness and that confusion. So our nursing focus is to replace those electrolytes and to fill and fluids to correct that alkalosis, right? So it's metabolic because it is to do with the body. They're vomiting, so be alkalosis. If we have a patient that is diabetic, so we have a 40-year-old with fruity breath. So that's one of our, um, with, with our diabetic patients, we could um, see that fruity breath. Um, and they have... Um, deep cool smell breathing and confusion 
So if they are, we know that they're diabetic, so that is going to be keto, and um, they have that fruity breath, they're not wanting to, let's just say they're not wanting to take their insulin or they're eating too many sugary foods and don't want to change their diet, that's going to be keto acidosis, okay? Uh, kidney failure, so uh, that would be, again, that is something to do with the body, so it's going to be metabolic, metabolic acidosis. So, for instance, we have here a 60-year-old patient has chronic renal failure. They're coming in. They're experiencing a lot of nausea, fatigue, and confusion. So, what patient condition would this be? That would be metabolic acidosis. Okay. So, with the reproductive system, so the ovarian and uterine cycle. So, make sure you know these phases. So we have a mnemonic here, which is many pretty ladies ovulate secretly, okay? So M for menses. So this, in this phase, we have low estrogen and progesterone. The uterine lining, it's shedding, right? Uh, the proliferation, proliferate phase. So pretty, the P for pretty. Proliferation phase, the follicles are mature, the estrogen levels are rising, okay? So they're pro, so they're rising. Um, and then ovulation, so this is a sudden LH surge, okay? Then we have the secretory phase. So the secretory phase of corpus luteum, it secretes that progesterone, um, and it's preparing, so think of progesterone to prepare for pregnancy, okay? So progesterone, prepare for pregnancy. Okay, now we have, going back to our respiratory, so we have different structures that you need to memorize for um, uh, your test. So we have the pharynx. So the P for pharynx is that passageway for that food and air. So P, pharynx, passageway for that food and air. The nasocochiae, so think of that like a humidifier, okay? So that humidifies, it warms, it filters that air. And then we have our olfactory. Olfactories, think of our senses, all olfactory epithelium is responsible for that sense of smell, okay? And then our epiglottis. So epiglottis, as you can see here in this image, our epiglottis is that little flap, okay? So this little flap, it prevents the food from going all the way back up into our windpipe and that can cause a lot of other issues for us, okay? Now we have parts of the larynx. So our larynx is made up of these parts. So we have the CC, remember the CC, the cortocord cartilage. We have the um, epiglottis. Then we have the vocal cords. Remember the la, 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 it's part of the vocal cords. And then the thyroid cartilage. So those are the four parts of the larynx. Key things to remember. So our cartilage rings, our CC, it remains that it remains open for that trachea. So uh, the, it keeps the trachea open so that air can go through, right? Another thing to remember is gas diffusion. So gas always goes from high to low. Okay, so if you think of something that's diffusing or think of a diffuser, it's kind of just going through you have facilities in inspiration so inspiration it's like you're breathing inside you're breathing inside so what's contracting those diaphragm muscles right so your diaphragm is contracting quiet expiration so this um could potentially be a question so you have a patient you're kind of checking up on them and you see that they have they're doing quiet expiration so Expiration, it's exiting, so exiting. So this would be a relaxation. So you ex exit all the bad things, you're relaxing. So relaxing those inspiratory muscles. The vital capacity, this is the maximum volume of air expelled from the lungs, okay? Now have other terminology, good to know information would be our dyspnea. Dyspnea means difficulty, dyspnea for D for dyspnea, D for difficulty breathing, okay? So you have a patient, you um, you see that he has trouble breathing, difficulty breathing. So what would that be? What is the medical term for that? It would be dyspnea, okay? The same thing with normal breathing. You see a patient, you see that he has normal breathing. What would that be? Eupnea. Now, 
you have a patient, you go and check on him, and you notice that there's temporary sensation of breathing. Okay, so there is no breathing. So that would be apnea. So think of sleep apnea. You have a patient that's sleep apnea that is that temporary sensation of breathing, right? Now, here are some digestive highlights. So we want to know that our lamnia propria that contains those capillaries and those lymphatics for nutrient absorption, okay? Now, going back to our pancreas, our pancreatic juices component, so think of a lovely snack naturally. So that would be our amylase, lipase, sodium bicarb, and our nucleus, okay? With our reproductive um, system, we have these concepts that you need to know. So our um, the scrotum is to regulate uh, the temperature for those testes, okay? The cervix. The cervix is a tubular structure that C connects that uterus into the vagina. And then our myometrium. So remember, anything with myo, um, myometrium, that is going to be in the middle and that is going to be our muscle, our muscle layer. That is our middle layer, right? So it contracts during childbirth, okay? So that is what helps expel uh, the baby, right, and during partition. Um, our vulva, so vulva is, includes the labia minora and labia majora, okay? And then lastly, our hormones, so our hormone functions, okay? So I made here a little chart. So we have FSH, so they're follicle-stimulating hormones. So the primary function for this would be to stimulate that gamete production, okay? So in males, that would be the spermatogenesis, okay? So sperm and, cre and genesis, genesis creation, so creation of sperm, right? In females, it would be to stimulate follicle development, okay? So FSH for males, spermatogenesis. In females, stimulate that follicle development, okay? So think of that F for follicle um, for FSH, okay? LH, or luteinizing hormone, is to primary function is to hormone uh, hormone regulation. In males, it would be that testosterone production, and in females, it would be to trigger that ovulation. In estrogen, there are multiple roles of hormones. So, um, it, but for the females, it would be to menstruate uh, for that menstrual cycle and for that bone health. Okay progesterone so think of pro pregnancy p so remember p to prepare for pregnancy so progesterone prepares for pregnancy so females that uterine lining um is in maintenance right so it's not shedding it's in maintenance okay and and are, that is all of the concepts um you need to know for this test